So we'll just pray and anoint in. Um, I know you're keen to share and we're keen to hear. And um, I declare you to be a woman of God. And we wouldn't have asked you to speak if we didn't think that. Yeah, I just want to pray. Father, thank you that you are right here with us. And Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit comes and brings life to your word, that it would accomplish all that you send it out to do. And Father, we ask for a revelation of who you are and uh, a revelation of your love, your pure love, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, just a very quick thing uh, about um, who I am. Um, I know some of you, but not all. I had the great privilege of um, meeting Eric and Jackie when they came to visit Worcester. And then I came up to um, theirs, it was um, for a prophetic party, as he calls it. And it was nearly 18 months ago now. And it was one of the most anointed times I've ever had with Father God. And I received a very um, powerful prophetic word that day. And I transcribed it and I am holding on to it and pressing into God for it. And this is part of it. So I feel very um, grateful and privileged to be with you. Um, at the beginning of every year, as a family, we get together and we ask Father God uh, what he wants to say to us for this year. And um, sometimes people draw pictures or sometimes people write down things or just share things. And um, I, I love my notebooks. I always love to write things down and I've got this really beautiful notebook. And um, I just started to write and I, you know, it was quite nice because it sort of surprised me what I was writing sort of thing. And the first words I wrote, the first se sentence was, um, dig deep wells to bring forth living waters of refreshment. This takes action, energy, perseverance, and there's a cost to pressing into what God has for us, to dig the wells and let his river of life flow. Um, and that sort of stayed with me, um, the digging the deep wells, and I've been asking um, Father about that, um, what that looks like, you know, what the purpose of it is, you know, just to get vision with it. And um, as a story in Genesis, uh, let's go back to the beginning, um, well, near the beginning, and it's in Genesis 26. If you have your Bibles, you might want to follow it through with me, or you can just listen, that's absolutely fine, whatever you like to do. Um, just to say, I will be giving various Bible references tonight um, because I love the word of God and within it is such life and truth and it accomplishes way more than we even can ask or imagine. Um, and it, it's it's got, um, uh, um, actually before we go to Genesis, I must read this quick verse from um, the Passion Translation. It's Psalm 92 and a couple of verses in the Passion Translation which just say so much about the Word of God. Um, verses 5 and 6. Uh, Psalm 92 in the Passion Translation says, What mighty miracles and your power at work, just to name a few. Depths of purpose and layers of meaning saturate everything you do. Such amazing mysteries are found within every miracle that nearly everyone seems to miss. Those with no discernment can never really discover the deep and glorious secrets hidden in your ways and um, that's what is going to happen tonight um, father god has depths of purpose and layers of meaning for us and certain things i say might not you know ring any bells or mean a lot to you but other things you'll think that's a treasure i need to dig into that yeah so just open your heart to what father wants to show you 
wonderful. Depths of purpose, layers of meaning. Right, back to Genesis 26 and a story uh, about Isaac and obviously about Wells. Um, and Isaac um, and Wells is mentioned seven times in the word of God. Um, so we'll start at verse one, yeah, of our, um, Genesis 26. Uh, now there was a famine in the land besides the previous famine that occurred in the days of Abraham. So Isaac went to Gerar, to Abimelech, king of the Philistines. The Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt, stay in the land of which I shall tell you. Sojourn in this land, I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all these lands and I will establish the oath which I swore to your father, Abraham. I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and will give your descendants all these lands. And by your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because Abraham obeyed me and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes and my laws. So Isaac lived in Gerar. We're going to miss the next section and we're going to go straight to verse 12. Now Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. And the man became rich and continued to grow richer until he became very wealthy. They had possessions of flocks and herds and a great household so that the Philistines envied him. Now all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines stopped up by filling them with earth. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, go away from us, for you are too powerful for us. And Isaac departed from there and camped in the valley of Gerar and settled there. Then Isaac dug again the ancient wells of water, which had been dug in the days of his father Abraham, for the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham, they filled them with earth and he gave them the same names which his father had given them. But when Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found there was a well of flowing water, the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with the herdsmen of Isaac, saying, the water is ours. So he named the well Esek because they contended with him. Then they dug another well and they quarreled over it too. So he named it Sitna. He moved away from there and dug another well and they did not quarrel over it. So he named it Rehoboth for he said, at last the Lord has made room for us. We will be fruitful in the land. Then he went up from there to Beersheba. And the next section, the last little bit, is, is actually verse, oh yeah, no, in verse 20, 25, yeah, verse 25, um, Isaac built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there, and there Isaac's servants dug a well. Then there's a conversation with the king of the Philistines, came to see Isaac. And then verse 32 and 33, we'll end with those two verses. After the conversation with the king of the Philistines, now it came about on the same day that Isaac's servants came in and told him about the well which they dug and said, we have found water. So he called it Sheba. Therefore, the name of the city is, Be is Beersheba to this day. So we're going to have a look at the wells, but the first thing I want to say is in the times that Isaac and Abraham were living in the land, the promised land, water was life. They had to have water to survive. Now we know that we all need water to survive. And obviously we have a big system to provide our water there. They had to find wells water to drink, 
water for their cattle, water for the crops, for life, to be fruitful, to be able to survive in that land. It was that essential. And um, the first thing that we notice here is in verse one, there was a famine in the land, another famine, as well as the previous famine. So Isaac went to Gerar. It's, that's in about the middle of the southern bit of Israel. So it's right in the middle. And it was the land of the Philistines. The Philistines were living there. Abimelech, king of the Philistines. He was the ruler there. And there's a time in a land of famine, in a time of famine, there's a time to go where there is provision. The Lord is our provider. And he, because the next verse, it says, the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt, stay in the land of which I shall tell you, sojourn in this land. So he went and then God told him to stay there. Um, God will show us where the provision is for us. Um, I'm going to go on to um, the obvious section where it says, because he sowed in that land and reaped in the same year hundredfold, the Lord blessed him. The man became rich, continued to grow richer till he became very wealthy. It's verse 12 and 13. So that the Philistines envied him. The first time we hear about the Philistines relationship with Isaac is that they grew jealous. They grew jealous of the Lord's blessing over him. And then all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines stopped up by filling them with earth. And they stopped the flow of water, which meant he had no choice but to move from there. Now, when a well is filled with earth, it obviously stops being a well because it cannot produce that life giving water. And earth, it's really valuable in a garden. You know, for the crops to grow, you have to have earth. But when you put it in a well, it will stop the flow of what God wants to do. And there were various strategies in this story of the enemy. And not that we want to give the enemy in any glory, but it is wisdom. It is discernment to know, to be able to recognize the works of the enemy so that we can stand and we can, and we can um, pray effective prayers to stop the work of the enemy and to move on into God's provision and the flow of living water in our lives. Before we go and look at the wells, I just want to talk a little bit about the living water. Um, Jesus had a lot to say about living water. There is one of my favourite um, recollections and stories of Jesus is in John chapter four. If we have a quick look at John chapter four. And um, this is a, a fantastically powerful story on many, many levels, um, not the least of which was how radical this was. Um, Jesus's first revelation of who he was, was to a woman, a Samaritan woman, a working class, ordinary Samaritan woman. And that is radical on many levels. Firstly, the Jews and the Samaritans didn't speak to each other. Long history there, but they, um, the Jews felt that the Samaritans were unclean and impure and they literally didn't speak to them. Women, men did not consider women to be their equal. And it was very um, revolutionary what Jesus did. So he goes to the well. Now the wells were places of meeting. Uh, it was like a, there was a welcome, 
at the well. And this day, this woman found the most amazing welcome. As she came to do her ordinary everyday work of drawing water from the well, um, this meeting, this welcome changed her life because she met with Jesus. Um, verse seven, there came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said, give me a drink for his disciples had gone away to the city to buy food. Therefore, the Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you being a Jew ask me for a drink since I'm a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. She said, sir, you have nothing to draw with. The well is deep. Where do you get then that living water? You're not greater than our father Jacob, are you? who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle. Jesus answered and said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. The woman said, sir, give me this water so I will not be thirsty or come all the way here to draw. And then the story goes on. He knows her through and through. He knows her. He knows who she is. He, he sees her. He knows her. He values her. He gives her an identity and a value in the kingdom. It's just wonderful. And um, a couple of chapters later on, or three chapters later on, a verse I want to read from um, John chapter seven. And this is wonderful. Um, it's the feast. And there are crowds and crowds and crowds of people there. And um, Jesus is teaching at the feast. It's the Feast of Booths, Tabernacles, which is a major, major feast. And... Um, it's, we're starting at verse 37. So there's crowds and crowds of people. And it says, on the last day of the feast, the last great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried out with a loud voice. Now, you would think, whatever he's going to say, it's got to be worth hearing. This is important because there's a big, big crowd of people. And Jesus has this to say to them. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. This he spoke of the Holy Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For the spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. The Holy Spirit from our innermost being flow rivers of living water. So when we're talking about the wells and we're talking about natural water, there is the obvious, wonderful spiritual parallel of the living water, the Holy Spirit, the water of life from the river of life. That is our free gift that we've received when we came to know Jesus. And from our innermost being, that is flowing out. So as we look at Isaac's wells and the strategies of the enemy were placed there and what God told him to do and his obedience, let's think about our own well. Yeah. And from our innermost being, our we're digging deep wells here. Right digging deep wells of pressing into God to let his river of living water flow out because we are in a world where the people are desperate for living water. 
they are desperately thirsty. And this is our time to flow with the rivers of living water. Let's go back to Genesis 26. Okay, so the Philistines had filled Abraham's wells with earth. They were jealous. The king of the Philistines, Abimelech, said to Isaac, this is verse 16, go away from us, for you are too powerful for us. And Isaac, he didn't have a choice, departed from there and camped in the valley of Gerar and settled there. It wasn't far away, far enough away. Still the same place, but he was in the valley, which was a harder place to live. That's why they wanted him to go there. Verse 18, Isaac dug again the wells of water, the ancient wells of water that had been dug in the days of his father, Abraham. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham, and he gave them the same names which his father had given them. I just want to pause there for a moment. The ancient wells. There's a spiritual principle of remembering what God has done for us. Remembering what God has done for our generations before us, whether they are natural generations, if they knew the Lord, or whether we're talking the spiritual generations that have gone before us. And there's a wonderful verse in Jeremiah chapter six. Jeremiah chapter six. No, it was here. Oh, you've moved it. Sorry. Yeah, no. oh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just fine. I had it all open, but Tim's just. Okay. <clears throat> so Jeremiah chapter six, verse 16. Thus says the Lord, stand by the ways and see and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it <clears throat> and you shall find rest for your souls it's the ancient path the good path where we find rest for our souls and we heard earlier today matthew 11 28 and 29 that's the other time the bible says rest for our souls and that is when Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. And the ancient way is the way of Jesus. It's the way of being humble in heart and gentle. That's how we find rest for our souls. Not in pride, but in humility. So Isaac dug the ancient wells. Back to Genesis verse 19. When Isaac's servants dug in the valley, and found there a well of flowing water. The herdsmen of Gerar, the Philistines, quarreled with the herdsmen of Isaac, saying, the water is ours. So he named the well Esek because they contended with him. Now Esek means contention, dispute, quarrel. Okay, and that's the first attack if you like well apart from filling up the wells in the first place to make him move the jealousy this is the um contention the enemy wants to contend with us and we're called not to contend with the enemy we can declare victory but we're not called to contend with the enemy 
We're called to contend with God for his promises, with the authority to press in and see this, his kingdom come. So Isaac dug another well. He didn't contend with the enemies. He dug another well. Verse 21. They dug another well. They quarreled over it too. So he named it Sitna. Now Sitna means accusation. Accusation. Hostility. Enmity. It's getting a bit more obvious now. Yeah. And the enemy is the father of lies. And he will accuse us. And God promises us this is in Isaiah 54 we'll start at verse 14 this is our, our inheritance our inheritance in righteousness you will be established you'll be far from oppression you will not fear and from terror for it will not come near you if anyone fiercely assailed you it will not be from me Whoever assailed you will fall because of you. Behold, I myself have created the smith who blows the fire of coals and brings out a weapon for its work. And I have created the destroyer to ruin. No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that accuses you in judgment, you will condemn. This is the inheritance of the servants of the Lord and their vindication is from me declares the Lord. He moved away. We'll go back to verse 22. Isaac didn't engage. He moved and he dug another well. He moved from there and dug another well, for they did not quarrel over it. So he named it Rehoboth. For he said, at last the Lord has made room for us. We'll be fruitful in the land. Rehoboth means a broad and spacious place. It's got room. And that is our inheritance in God. A broad and spacious place. King David knew that. In Psalm 18. This is his uh, wonderful psalm that he sang after God gave him um, victory over all of his enemies. And verse 19 of Psalm 18, the Lord brought me forth into a broad place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. And in Psalm 16, David says, the lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Indeed, my heritage is beautiful, beautiful to me. And our promised land, the place God brings us to where there is a plentiful supply of living water, where the enemies leave us alone. There's that place. There's a place where the enemy can't even see us because it's that place of intimacy with God. The enemy can't see us when we're there. It's a place of protection. You know, it says in Song of Songs that he hides us in the cleft of the rock. He calls to us to come away with him. He's our beloved. And that place is a place where God allows, it, allows us to be in a spacious. We have room. We have room to be. We have room to grow. That's where the flow of the living water is. I just want to talk about the last well. The last well. Um, what happens then? So he goes to this place, Beersheba, and he builds an altar there, which speaks of worship and remembrance. When God does something for us, what can we do but fall down in worship? Our hearts filled with thankfulness and awe. There's a sense of holiness and awe when God does something. He built an altar and called upon the name of the Lord. He pitched his tent there and there Isaac's servants dug a well. And after the conversation with the king, verse 32, 
his servants came in and said, and told him about the well which they dug. We found water. So he called it Sheba. And that's why the city is called Beersheba to this day. And Sheba means, it means an oath. Uh, or it also it refers to the number seven. And the number seven in the Bible is, well, people call it the complete number. It's abundance. It's a number of abundance and restoration. How God, when he puts us in the place that he wants us, he gives restoration sevenfold. There's a sevenfold restoration. And, you know, may it be many, many morefold. You know, when it's restoration, what the enemy has stolen from us. And Jesus said in John 10, 10. Turn to that. Read the whole thing. John chapter 10, verse 10. I'm sure you know this one. Mm -hmm. The thief, the enemy, comes to steal, kill and destroy. He's the destroyer. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. And that is our inheritance in God, the place of abundance, the place where we have rest for our souls because there's humility like Jesus. That is our inheritance, being transformed from glory to glory to be like Jesus. And that place of abundance where the river of living water flows. That is who we are. And that is God's call to us for 2021. Be discerning, recognize the work of the enemy. And when it's time to dig another well, let's dig another well. When it's time to move on, when it's time to press in and believe God for those words he's given us, those inheritance words that are ours, led us in strength, his strength, in our weakness, he is strong, press in and dig those wells because there's an overflow of living water that the people around us are desperate for. God bless you. Excellent word. Excellent word, Lorraine.